If you're not familiar with uh, Stefano's work, uh, we figured we'd start out with a little Q&A, but this looks like a lot of you are already got books in hand and stuff like that. Um, but I figured I'd just start out and you know, thank you for coming down. And um, uh, we had tried to do this last fall, and the fires in the North Bay kind of made that a little hard and difficult, so we just scheduled it. I hope everybody was okay during the very dark time. Yeah, so, uh, so we're here now. And uh, I figured uh, we'll just kind of get jump into it. And um, I'd be interested, for folks that don't know, um, sort of, you know, a little bit about where you were born, where you were raised, how you landed up here. Uh, that's a long and winding story. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I was uh, I was born in the what was then Soviet Union. I was um, born and raised there until uh, I was six, almost sixteen, and the Soviet Union became Russia. Uh, and then we, uh, my father moved to Canada for work and uh, took us with him. Uh, my mom, my sister, and me. And I spent another sixteen years in Canada. I went to I finished high school there. Uh, discovered that, hey, I actually want to do art for a living, and can I do that? Let's find out. Uh, so I went to Sheridan College for a classical animation three years, best three years of my life. Uh, do you have any college students here? Is it a good time or what? <laughs> it's the best time. Uh, because it's that sweet spot where parents no longer tell you what to do, where to go, but you don't quite yet have to get a job and like have life responsibilities. So, amazing. Um, and yeah, I spent another 16 or so years in Canada <clears throat> uh, learning and working. And then I married an American over there. <laughs> and, yeah, in case you're wondering why there's a baby here, that's my baby. Aww. His name is Kaden. He really likes doing high jumps right now. <laughs> <laughs> Very good, thank you, Kate. <laughs> thank you, Dad. Um, so, yeah, and that's how I ended up here in the Bay Area um, working on and uh, being a comics artist slash graphic novelist, whatever we're called these days, I can't keep up. Uh, I drew sequential art for a living. I tell stories and I draw pictures to go with them. Uh, I can do that anywhere. I've drawn. Uh, you know, on, on my knee in airports all over the world uh, because deadlines have to be met and sometimes, you know, you're in an airport when that deadline has to be met. I, one of the uh, funny stories that I sometimes tell, uh, my friends and I planned a trip to Japan, just like a group trip with a tour, and my plan was that I, would, I was working on night school at the time, that was my second series that I did. And my brilliant plan was I would be done, and then it's my vacation, I'm going to Japan, I'm going to eat all the food. So comes the morning of the flight, uh, not only am I not done, I'm not packed, I lost my passport, and like my <laughs> the car is leaving for the airport in half an hour, so I'm throwing stuff in, the, in my bag, um, drawing with one hand, packing with the other, and where's my passport? I did find it very last minute, but uh, I'll never forget that morning. <laughs> and then I spent, it's a long flight, it's eight hours plus, and I spent the entire time drawing. I was still drawing when we landed uh, in the hotel room. My roommates went to sleep, and <laughs> I was still drawing that chapter of night school. Um, I did hand it in, finally, and then the next morning after I arrived, and then it was done, and then my vacation started. And that's the life of an artist for you. Um, but yeah, did that answer your question? Yeah, I, I, well, how did you, I, I mean, you talked about going to college and studying art and everything, but what led you to go from essentially doing uh, your own illustrations and everything to becoming more, basically making a career out of you know, doing comics or professional art? Actually, you didn't really start out with comics, you started out doing, or were you known initially for, you kind of got your foot on that, in the door big time with uh, drama colleges. Yeah, uh, well, it's funny. There's a lot of, um, I guess, tense pushback between calling comics manga and manga yeah. comics. Uh, manga, as I understand, literally means uh, irresponsible pictures, and it's meant to, uh, like, it's comics. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what it means in Japanese. Um, uh, it does have 
certain styles that are very distinctive. And I just I fell in love with that. that those were some of the first comics that I read. Uh, from the one half, I don't know if anyone's here heard. Yay! I uh, highly recommend it by uh, Rumiko Takahashi, and um, Oh My God is one of the early uh, comics that came over, and I just I really wanted to do that. Uh, I had seen color comics before then, like North American uh, superhero stuff, and it just seemed inaccessible to me, besides the fact that I didn't know where to start reading them. Um, and full color art was just intimidating. I didn't, I was never good with color. I'm still not. Uh, we, I, okay, I see some very broke books around here. Uh, one thing you'll notice is it's a very limited palette. And that was uh, partly by choice, partly by the fact I don't know how to color. <laughs> I still don't know how to color. So I, I picked the basis possible, the simplest possible way of coloring, and I stuck with that throughout the books. Uh, so manga is mostly black and white, Yes. and I'm like, ah, yes, this is my jam, and I will do that. So I started doing um, manga type stuff uh, for uh, Girl of Magic was one of the first sites that I think had online comics. And the reason I started, to answer your question, is uh, apparently I can't not do comics. Uh, when I was a child, uh, my family had a notebook. And I mean, I, mean, I see families here. So communication is key, right? Uh, otherwise you end up with no one going shopping or you know, taking out the dog or the cat gets fed twice because we know they like to make faces. Uh, so we had a notebook in the family that we would leave notes for each other. Uh, the dog needs to be walked. The cat has been fed. Don't trust the cat. You know, Fred, <laughs> somebody please go by Fred. Uh, and I would draw little illustrations for those uh, notes. Uh, and that just, that followed me through my life. I would always uh, do little stories, uh, draw illustrations for them. Then I discovered comics like, oh, that's perfect. I get to do both. Um, and I just, I always told stories and always drew uh, sequential art to go with them. So, and then I suddenly, I was putting, I was drawing it anyway, and then uh, I was approached by uh, my very first book you will find nowhere on this earth, because I think like 50 copies of it exist. Uh, what I did in high school, it was called Yoriko Maiden of the First Fire, and yeah, I hope nobody ever reads it. <laughs> but, you know, it was my very first uh, thing that I actually completed five issues of. Uh, while in high school, I did uh, five 24 issues that an indie publisher called Kevin Nakel Manga mm -hmm. published. And by indie, I mean uh, they put ash cans together. Okay. So, eight and a half by 11, uh, printed on uh, at a local printer. Folded, stapled together, sold at local conventions. Uh, they had some distribution at the local stores, but you know, I got like 50 bucks royalties from that, so that was. Uh, that's, I, I liked that. I was a high school student at the time, that was a lot of money. Um, <clears throat> and you know, they sort of, that sort of went away. Uh, Your book never got finished, thank goodness. Uh, and I moved on to other things. I did Chasing Rainbows for Girlomatic.com. Um, then I did Night Silver for Wirepop.com. Uh, neither of which are finished. They're marginally better than Yoriko, but not by much. And uh, I had those two comics running at the same time online. And one day I just get an email from Tokyo Pop saying, we like your stuff, would you like to do a book for us? Um, so, it just sort of happened to me. I wasn't planning it. I was doing it anyway, so I might as well get paid for it. Right. right. So. so, TraumaCon gets, um, for those that don't know, it gets, got nominated for an ice uh, which is essentially akin to getting an economy kind of getting an Oscar nod. Um, was that a, both a surprise to you, and did you feel uh, anything like, I guess, going forward after that, did you feel any pressure to have to? Do anything differently, or did you say, like, look, that was a, a maybe a fluke, and I'm just going to continue the way I do my art? Or I 
felt zero pressure because Good. I didn't win. <laughs> 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 um, no, it was amazing to be nominated. I actually got flown out to Baltimore. Uh, I'm sorry. The San Diego. Yeah, to uh, uh, to go to the dinner. Cause if you're nominated for an ice cream, you get a free dinner at the awards, <laughs> and that was really amazing. <laughs> uh, yeah, I got nominated twice, so I got two free dinners. <laughs> um, well, I wasn't going to jump ahead on the second one. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, that's all right. I'm <laughs> too wide a slice me now. And yeah, so that was, it felt really good to be right. Didn't, yeah, I didn't feel pressure because, again, this is something, uh, I mean, do we have any creators here in the. We don't do it for the awards, do we? <laughs> no, it's really, I mean, awards are nice to have recognized. What really matters to me personally is uh, something that I decided early on as a creator, as a writer, is that I don't want to have to be there along with my work uh, to explain it to people, to sell it to people, uh, because A, I'm terrible at selling. I'm, um, the only reason I do conventions anymore is my husband, <laughs> who helps me and makes me go. Uh, but I just, I, I just sort of wilt behind the table. I hide behind my sketchbook. I don't talk to anybody, and I'm a terrible salesperson for my own work. Uh, so I decided a better strategy for me would be to write work that sells itself. Okay. So I, I focus all my energy on just really communicating. Uh, what's in my head, and uh, if I achieve that, if I get that connection with the reader, where they read my stuff and like, yes, you know, you express something that I've been feeling but couldn't put into words, or like I answer the questions that question that they ha had but didn't know they had. Like to me, that's the true reward. Um, just having that connection with that. Well, in terms of go, following up on that, so making a connection with the audience, what it's and jumping ahead a little bit to second Eisner sort of nomination, what what caused your shift then to go from more of that manga style art and to doing um, to doing awkward in the, in the, uh, in the very book series? How did you sort of formulate that? And you know, um, was that was that a conscious thing? That was it something that was percolating that you finally it just gelled or? Had you always wanted to tell us, uh, you know, kind of a young person's story kind of thing? So, uh, the short of it is I have an amazing editor. Her name is Ju Young Lee, and she is, uh, she has done so much for the fact that I'm still a graphic novelist, because I rage quit comics <laughs> with every book I do. Comics are so hard to make, and she just, she finds a way to keep me going. Uh, uh, she calls me out when I'm just being lazy with writing, uh, in a nice way. I mean, she doesn't crush my spirit, which is really easy to do with the creator. Like, just one line of criticism when we were crying ourselves to sleep that day. So, it's, uh, she, she walks, she, she knows how to, uh, how to keep me going. And she was the one who uh, suggested trying middle grade. And, Whenever I did presentations, because uh, my early stuff, uh, you'll see some of it in, out in the hallway, was it was all 13 plus, so for teens. And I would argue DramaCon is older teen <laughs> because of some of the content. Um, and that's what I naturally tend towards. But every time I do presentations, uh, I would have parents coming up asking, I mean, these look fun and great, but my child is 10. <laughs> and do you have anything for that age range? And for the longest time, I didn't. Uh, so my editor was like, well, why don't you? Uh, and that's how the very book series was I, 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 Again, again, it's, it's, um, where did you draw on for the, for the stories themselves? Or was there anything that, from your own youth that you used? Or did you, do you know people with, you know, um, I don't think, uh, he didn't give me much info there, but uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Soon, so he'll be exactly. a source of, source of research. Uh, no, I have, uh, so I guess I'm no. I, okay. There's nothing in the books that is real. Uh, I, I don't like to put uh, real people in real situations um, in these books uh, for personal reasons, but um, also fiction to me is more fun. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Uh, like I could never do a memoir, never. Um, but that being said, everything in the books is written um, because it was informed uh, by like Brave, for those who don't know, is the second book in the series, and it's about a child that uh, is bullied. Bullied in school, and uh, that's something that I was. I was bullied in my middle school ages, and uh, I'm sure everybody remembers middle school and how unkind it was in those years uh, when humans are still figuring out how to human. Uh, and. You know, it's difficult, difficult for everybody, I believe, uh, but especially for those who are on the lower social status end of things. <clears throat> uh, so in that sense, uh, the books are informed mm -hmm. by uh, what I've seen in life. But nothing in them is real. None of those people are real. So I hope that answers the question. Yeah, um, you just come out with Crush. Last time I saw you, you were just actually finished the art you were Oh my gosh! <laughs> Remember that? Um, uh, that was last fall, and uh, you know that was off to off to the first. And now, now it's out. Um, are you? I mean, I'm sure there's folks in here that are working on number four, or are you taking a little breather? Or? Uh, I, I am taking a little breather right now, but uh, I can't really comment on what's happening next. But there will be stuff happening. So I just can't say what it is. Um, well, I could probably keep going for all day, but I don't know if you want to take a few questions. Uh, I would like to take, to take, would love to take a few questions. Um, do you guys have questions? Yeah. Um, talk really loud, please, so we can try to get you on the mic. Okay. Um, when you're when you come up with a concept for a story, mm -hmm. let's say uh, when you the past books you published, or whatever. From start to finish, I know that's going to be too long. <laughs> um, I know it's a lot of work, um, but how do you approach like the schedule? I know you have other things going on in your life, but is the drawing sitting down? Can you explain a little bit about your process? You don't mind? Um, my process involves a lot of crying and calls from my editor. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, it is an insurmountable amount of work to produce a graphic novel uh, from beginning to end. Uh, and uh, through trial and error, I've come to a process that sort of works for me, but this won't necessarily work for everyone. So you have to figure out your own <coughs> method of pain management. Um, so the way it starts for me is I give a little one-page pitch to my editor with what there will be like a paragraph summary. Oh, buddy. Oh. I stacked the cups, that's all. Oh, uh, you know those riddle, little red solo cups? He cannot stand uh, to see them in a pyramid. Um, he comes to them like Godzilla. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'll give her a, a short pitch. Uh, just paragraph descriptions of the main characters, paragraph description of what the gist of the book will be. Um, and once we decide that we're on the same page, uh, I get to uh, what I call, it's kind of like a research and development stage of the project, um, where I will sketch the characters, uh, draw them, they're not really model sheets, uh, that would be too fancy for, uh, for, for my process, but I just try to get to know them, so I'll do like sketches of each character, uh, exploring their personality, and from that later, I hear you, Kaden. <laughs> uh, from that later, I can uh, find stuff to put in my scenes that come after. So after I do the that initial getting to know my subject matter, uh, that can be anywhere from like a couple of weeks to a month. Uh, you can't really afford to take too much longer, otherwise it'll just stretch into infinity, and you do want to finish your project. Uh, then I. Do I storyboard the entire book, and I can't understate uh, how important it is to do the storyboards first, uh, because a page, a, a page in the a final page in the book takes me, uh, I guess, five to seven hours to complete per page. There's two hundred in each book, or more, and. The last thing you want to find out by the time you get to that end of uh, seven hours 
is that the page doesn't work. You show it to your editor and like, well, uh, the flow is messed up. The reader gets confused uh, where to go next uh, to read the panel. Uh, so that's why we storyboard. Uh, to storyboarding is a lot of work, uh, but it's so worth it in the end. Uh, and in that stage, uh, I can show it to my editor, and she can read it quickly, and tell me where stuff sucks and has to be changed. Uh, for example, for Brave, uh, the first chapter alone, I storyboarded 18 times. I'm sorry, 12 times, which felt like 18, because it's a lot of work. And I'm glad I did, because I read those first drafts now, and they were just subpar. They were not good enough. Uh, so storyboarding the entire book, uh, you're basically writing, uh, when you're doing comics, you're writing with pictures and words together. Uh, it's like you're writing two languages at once. So they have to work together. And that's the only way to really know if they are meshing well together is storyboarding. Um, so that process takes forever. Uh, I usually spend uh, at least two to three weeks per chapter. So that can stretch into seven, eight months. And then once I have that, uh, huge relief, because that was the hard part, strangely. Uh, and production of the actual pages, like I, I already have my layouts, the storyboard layouts, so I use those as a base for my pencils, inks, and then colors. Uh, and that can go so quickly. Apparently, I can now do a book in three months while nursing a child, which is what happened with the drug. Yeah, I don't recommend it. I was green in the face when I finished. Um, so altogether, probably about a year. Uh, but yeah, storyboarding is the most important thing. Uh, drawing afterwards will be uh, a walk in the park compared to the storyboards. But on a daily basis, like daily, like 10, eight, 10 hours a day? Or? Uh, it's hard to maintain that. Uh, again, people are different. Some people can sit down at 9 a.m. and work until 5. That's not me. I've, uh, I have days where I just, I want to stab the paper. And nothing comes out that's good. Uh, and I mean, before I get to the storyboards that I can actually show my editor that are not terrible, I have to go through several versions myself. And by the end of the second version, you're just like, am I even a writer? Like, why am I being paid to do this? I clearly am not, you know, fit for anything other than, I don't even know what I'm I couldn't get hired at a bookstore. I tried to uh, to get a part time job at a bookstore in the early days. Nobody would call me that. I'm like I don't even know what my fallback is here. If I can't make it work, um, I I did always want to be a parking attendant. So I told myself if this doesn't work out, I will drive one of those cool cars and be mean to people for one minute late on their parking. Uh, does that answer your question? Yeah. Oh, okay, good. Uh, sorry, that was long. That was good. Anybody else? Yes. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, sorry, did you get one? Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Is there uh, something that you've learned in your professional life that you wish you could go back and tell your teenage self about process? Something that you feel like you were wasting your time on as a kid that you don't worry about now? I know the exact thing. Uh, editing. I, I still hate editing, but I have recognized the importance of it. Uh, when I was like 16, even 17, 18, 20, I felt like I just did this. Why do I need to do it again? Uh, my poor art teacher uh, had to explain to me, we, one of the years in high school we were doing uh, paintings. They were our projects. We were supposed to produce by paintings. And I was like, oh, okay, canvas, here I go. Uh, and he said, no, 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 you have to do development sketches first, and you have to come up with at least three. And I'm like, okay, here's one, I love it. Um, Canvas, here I go. I'm like, no, no, do two more. Like, really work through this concept. Uh, and the whole idea of editing just seemed stupid to me for a long time. Uh, and I can now confirm 
my teacher was 110% correct. Editing uh, and working a concept through from different angles first uh, before you put that final draft to paper uh, is, it will just make your work a thousand times better, if not like 10, a million times better. Um, so that's a very important thing. The young lady back there. <clears throat> um, my question is What are some of the main challenges or obstacles that you face um, as an artist in a world that doesn't always value folk? Oh. Did everybody hear, did everybody hear that? Mm -hmm. What are the challenges what? that you face, I guess, as a creator uh, in, in a world that doesn't always value art? Yeah, okay. getting paid. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people like to pay an exposure. <laughs> Uh, I don't know if you guys have seen that meme uh, going around online. Um, people die of exposure. Yes, that's right, Kaden. He uh, No, no, there's, uh, there's this uh, really weird uh, mindset uh, that's slowly changing, uh, I'm happy to point out. But uh, for a long time, people just like, oh, you know, you're an artist. You love doing this. You will do this for free, right? Or like next to free. Uh, and no, no, no. Um, and it's really difficult for an artist because like I have no self-esteem. Uh, whatever self-esteem I had, uh, it is destroyed every single time I sit down to work. Uh, so I just, for a long time, it was very difficult for me to charge people for my work. I didn't know, I felt like I was robbing people by, you know, making them pay money for my stuff. Uh, so that was a big hurdle to get over uh, because your work is worthwhile. If they want something from you, that means it has value. That means, you know, you should be compensated for your time and effort. Um, and what, that, that's one of the most difficult lessons for an artist to learn, I found. Uh, it was for me, it was for like 99.9% of my friends uh, learning this, that you do have value as a creator. Um, and that's, I mean, real, that's literally the only way to survive as a creator. You make sure you get paid for your work. Uh, otherwise, you have no career. Uh, you have to drive a parking car, park <laughs> your car to make ends meet. Um, well, I'm glad we were helping you figure out your career path. Yeah. <laughs> you don't get that third eye. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think I see a question over there. Um, what door order do the books go in? Uh, awkward is first, brain is second, crush is third. Uh, and uh, some people have finally noticed that it goes in the alphabetical order. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, it's, uh, it's alphabetical order. That was the purpose. Uh, and while I'm blowing people's minds, uh, do you guys know about the uh, Mr. Raccoon's scavenger hunt in the books? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, does anybody not know? Okay, so there is a little Mr. Raccoon's scavenger hunt. Uh, may I borrow your copy for a second? <clears throat> uh, Mr. Raccoon is a, a recurring character in my books. He shows up in the background of pages uh, that are crowded. Uh, so he's usually always on the first page in the background right now. There he is. He's hiding by the lockers. Uh, and he is scattered. Uh, his cameras are scattered into, uh, throughout the book. Books, uh, all three. There's uh, Pat, is it 25 in Opera? Something like that. 25. I thought it was 22. That's what it says in the back of the book. But then my niece found three more. So, <laughs> in my defense, by the time I'm writing the afterword, I usually will have gone on like 50 hours without sleep. <laughs> um, uh, 25 in Awkward, 18 in Brave, and I have no idea how many crush. There was a Caden in my life. I have no meaning. I don't know how many directions. Um, I think I saw two more hands, so we'll take you, and then we'll take you, and then we'll uh, Yeah, I was just wondering, what's your favorite thing about working in like graphic novels specifically? Like, what do you think that you can do with it that you can't do with like other mediums of storytelling? Um, 
sky's the limit in graphic novels. It's really amazing the stuff that you can imagine and draw with just a pencil and paper. And I come from animation where making something, you know, even like a 10 minute episode will take a year. And 10 minutes of story, I mean, there's only so much you can tell. Uh, in a year, I can make, like, I make movies on paper, basically. And these are about middle school, but I could just as easily make it about epic kingdoms, dragons, elves. Uh, literally anything I can think of, I can put on that page and make you believe it, that it happened. Uh, and it's a thrill. It's a thrill to be able to do that. So that's probably, uh, I feel like an evil mastermind creating my own little world. So, two things, just one way to say, like, you know, uh, uh, brave really is supposed to be very popular. I cry while yeah. writing it. There's well, just from like, just the attraction of Foster at the very end. Mm -hmm. The question on this about was about character development. Whether you can make fun of me last time. The the characters, the way they interact with each other makes um, makes me think there's a lot more kind of going on off panel and under the hood with, with the way they interact. And I'm just sort of curious whether you developed a Kind of like a character interaction uh, Bible or a cheat, like a cheat sheet for like you know this character knows this one. These have been friends in second grade or whatever, like that kind of thing. When you when you kind of go through these books, you know, it's a weird thing. Um, I just said that I'm the evil mastermind behind this world, but um, it, actually, a lot of times I don't feel like I'm in control of the character interactions. Uh, sometimes. And like writing is such a mysterious thing. Like people will ask me, "How do you write? You know, how do you get your ideas?" And it's just it comes from my brain. My brain is somehow writing these things. And uh, sometimes characters surprise me. Uh, a lot of times, I will have an idea of who they are, uh, what their core programming is, like in terms of morals, in terms. Of uh, their vacant experiences that will shape their person. And I mean, I'm writing about kids, like there's nothing, there's nothing that's formed yet, right? Everything is shifting, everything is changing on a daily basis. Um, like even with adults, you're like, you're not the same, I'm not the same person that I was even five years ago. Like I'm a mother now, that changes you in ways, like I didn't know the way it would change me. I could not anticipate any of that. So like that's, that's human, you change and shift and yeah, just become a different person sometimes entirely. Uh, so I leave room for that when I write, uh, and I let characters surprise me sometimes. And the ending for Brave was actually different initially. Uh, I'm not going to tell what it was because it's not, it's nowhere near as um, punch worthy as uh, the one that I arrived at at the end of writing the book. But a lot of it had to do with uh, you know the characters that Foster ended up being, uh, the character that uh, Jensen ended up being. Um, so sometimes they they write the book for me in a way. Yeah, the Foster is very inspiring. Yeah. For first person, okay. Well, I'm glad you know, that like it's that connection. I, I live for that. That's why I'm still uh, I still have completely quit college. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, yeah, we've been a little longer than I thought, but that's fine. A lot, a lot of stuff going on, a lot of answers and questions and things like that. Um, uh, do, does anybody, is anybody an artist in here? Oh, I see somebody drawing. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I did that in science. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, I did. You asked if anybody was an artist. Oh, okay, okay. I thought you had a question. Um, uh, well, I'll just quickly do an overview of my uh, drawing process, um, in case that's of use to anybody. Uh, so once my storyboards are done, I do storyboards usually, um, I'm really cheap about my art materials, uh, so I'll use like inkjet paper with a, um, <clears throat> just a mechanical pencil. I have a, a 0 0.9, uh, I like the slightly thicker lid. Uh, and yeah, I just draw it with that. Um, and again, storyboards, the emphasis is on Spend as little time drawing it as you can. So, like stick figures, 
uh, panel layouts, don't, as soon as you catch yourself embellishing it, think about having to scrap it. And like you'll loosen up immediately. <laughs> um, so once the storyboards are done, after that I will scan it all into the computer. Uh, and I, a lot of times these days I pencil digitally. Uh, I actually, is my back like that? Ooh, so right there. Uh, a lot of crush, oh, I'm sorry. A lot of crush I actually penciled uh, at 2 a.m. in the morning by his cram uh, on the iPad. Uh, and I'm going to sound like an Apple commercial, but uh, this thing changed my creative life. Uh, so it's the iPad Pro, and it's got this app called Procreate. I highly recommend checking it out. Uh, yeah, pencil. So I imported the rough storyboards in here, uh, and this is a page. Like I'll do the panel borders in Photoshop, import it here, and then it can actually it, it'll do time lapse for you. I'm going to hold it up as high as I can. There. You guys see that? Mm -hmm. Uh, time lapse recording of uh, me just sketching over uh, this rough storyboard that I had done. Can you guys see that? Mm -hmm. uh, when it's done. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, and this thing, the battery lasts forever. Uh, the pencil, be careful not to lose it like I did almost several times. Uh, but the slight way it gets into that thing, you can take it anywhere with you. Like, do you like working in the cafe? at the cafe? You can. You just take this thing with you. Um, and then, uh, once I have my pencils, I'll put that, is it done? Oh, jeez, wow, okay. I guess that was a good age. age. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, anyway, my hands are tired. So. <laughs> uh, at the end of the day, you will have a drum page. Uh, but the app is called Procreate. And it's got a great set of brushes that mimic the feel of uh, the pencil texture. Uh, I love playing with it. And I mean, I work usually with uh, uh, the Wacom uh, Cintiq uh, Companion, which is the professional grade uh, drawing tablet. But uh, I had trouble, uh, for trouble, like now they have natural feeling brushes, but early on it was just, it felt too digital uh, to sketch, so I, pr I still preferred paper. Uh, and then these brushes came along like, oh, it's so expensive. Uh, but yeah, uh, it was a professional grade Wacom uh, tablet that I was coming from to this, and I thought I can't be impressed by a tablet anymore. And then this thing could draw sideways, the pencil. You can draw like with the side of the pencil on real paper. Yeah, my mind just blows. <laughs> and now I have an iPad Pro. I mean, though I, I, I was adamantly against Apple for a long time. I was a PC girl all the way. Um, so once I have my pencils drawn, I print that out. I still ink on paper. Uh, a lot of my friends ink digitally now, just because. Uh, I'll tell you now, digital saves artistic butts because of the way that you're able to just fix your mistakes like they never happened. Mm -hmm. uh, those who have worked in the digital realm, uh, you know how easy it is. Like I have trouble with uh, drawing proportions correctly sometimes, like the head would be too big or the, um, the arm would be too long. If you draw that on paper, too bad it's so sad. You know, you have to erase it and you have to draw it over. And digital, and that's lost time, that's lost effort. Uh, in digital, all you do is you select it, and then you go shrink, or like stretch, uh, and two seconds, and you fix it, you fixed it. Uh, so it's just a, a great time, a labor saver, and yeah, you can make it seem like you never made a mistake. That's what a lot of people. Um, so once I have the pe digital pencils, I will print it out in non-photo blue on a on large scale printer, uh, and ink by hand, then scan that back in, and all the coloring done uh, digitally using as little color as possible. Because no, no. Uh, and then at the end of it all, I have a book. So I hope that was helpful. Um, 
and yeah, so I guess if there's no art questions, we can um, start yeah. the second. We're going to go, uh, let's sit up over our next door by a uh, foyer over there, so uh, we'll get organized here.